What if the European Union united? The European Union is a continental union that encompasses 27 countries inside of the European continent. It started off with the Treaty of Paris of 1951 as the European Coal and Steel Community, and it consisted of Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. In 1958, the European Economic Community was created with the Treaty of Rome. In 1973, Denmark, Ireland, and the United Kingdom joined the EU, followed by Greece in 1981 and Portugal and Spain in 1986. In 1987, the Single European Act was signed, which formed a single European market. In 1993, the Treaty of Maastricht was signed, which ultimately created the European Union as we know it. In 1995, Austria, Finland, and Sweden joined the EU, followed by Cyprus, Czechia, Estonia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Slovakia, and Slovenia in 2004, and Bulgaria and Romania in 2007. In 2009, the Treaty of Lisbon was signed, which amended the European Union as we know it. In 2013, Croatia would join the EU as its newest member. Currently, Albania, Macedonia, Montenegro, and Serbia are candidates negotiating over a potential entry into the EU, while Bosnia and Herzegovina, Moldova, and Ukraine are candidates without any current negotiations. Georgia and Kosovo are currently applicants for candidacy, while negotiations with Turkey froze down. In 2002, the euro would be created as a unfeed European currency, which, as of now, 20 out of the 27 members use. In 1995, the Schengen area was created, which, as of now, almost all EU members, except for Bulgaria, Cyprus, and Romania, joined, and even non-EU members, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, and Switzerland, joined. In 2020, the United Kingdom would be the first and so far only country to ever leave the European Union, but this went horribly. There are calls to unify the European Union into a European Federation or United States of Europe, with 44% of people in favor and 35% opposed, and the people in dark green countries in favor of federalization. But so far, nothing has happened. But what if that didn't happen? What of the European Union united? In this timeline, the European Union holds a referendum whether to federalize, and 55.7% are in favor, while 44.3% are opposed to it. And thus, the European Union unifies as one country, namely the European Federation, and even Austria, Czechia, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Ireland, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Slovakia, Sweden, and the United Kingdom join the EU. The states of the European Federation would have a great deal of autonomy, like in India or the United States. And that the presidents slash prime ministers become governors, and the country legislatives become state legislatives. This causes Denmark to become the fourth biggest first level administrative divisions, thanks to Greenland and only behind Saka, Western Australia, and Krasnoyarsk. Germany, meanwhile, is the eleventh most populated first level administrative division and second most populated one, excluding Indian and Chinese provinces, and it would be by nominal GDP the richest division in the world. In this timeline, the Brexit vote fails by just 3.78 percent, and the United Kingdom remains in the European Federation. The EF would be a parliamentary system with the legislative being split into the Council, which gives all of its 28 states one seat each, and the Parliament, which has 705 seats, which are distributed by population. The president of the European Council would become president of the European Federation. And the president of the Commission would become prime minister. The first president would be Herman Van Rompuy, and the first prime minister would be Jose Manuel Duro Barroso. The European Parliament would contain seven parties: the European People's Party, Socialists and Democracy, European Conservatives and Reformists, Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe, later Renew Europe, the Left, the Greens, and Europe of Freedom and Direct Democracy, later Identity and Democracy. The official language of all of its member states would be recognized as official language, but German, French, and English would be the most important ones, and it would have three official scripts, namely the Latin, Hellenic, and Cyrillic alphabet. Its capital would be Brussels, but its biggest cities would be London, Berlin, and Madrid. Its biggest relation by far would be Christianity, with 71.6 percent, with 45.3 percent Catholics, 11.1 percent Protestants. 9.6% Orthodox and 5.6% other groups. 24% would be irreligious, 1.8% would be Muslim, and 2.6% other religions. The European Federation would be a juggernaut on the global stage.
Its GDP would be with 21 trillion the second in the world, surpassing China, but being behind the United States. The euro would probably become the second most important currency in the world only behind the US dollar. Its population would be with over 500 million people the third highest in the world being much greater than the United States, but far behind China and India. With 4,475,757 square kilometers it would be the seventh biggest county being bigger than India, but far behind Australia. The GDP per capita of the EF would be 14th in the world. Its military spending would just barely surpass that of China with 325 billion US dollars compared to China's 292 billion US dollar. This means that the US and UF would have together more than 50% of the global military expenditure. The European Federation probably would remain in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization as most of its members are in NATO, but this also means NATO expands into Austria, Cyprus, Ireland, Malta, Sweden and Finland. The European Federation would have the third most nukes, excusively from France and the United Kingdom, but it would be nothing compared to the United States and Russia. Its military strength would be similar to the Russian military as in terms of raw numbers they within around an equal amount of categories. But the EF has more modern equipment. For example the Russian army has more tanks. But the EF has better tanks like the Challenger 2 and Leopard 2 tanks. The European Federation would have 6 aircraft carrier, making them second behind the US with 11 and ahead of China, India and Japan with 2 each. The weak point of the European Federation however would be its angry dependence. Like China they barely have any natural resources and a huge demand. However they can export these resources from West Africa as they keep their sphere of influence inherited by France. Like the US or Russia Europe may also intervene in the Middle East. The European Federation would probably still support the government of national accord in Libya and without the help from France the House of Representatives may end up losing the war and Libya finishes the war being fully reunited. In Syria Europe would support the Syrian opposition to Assad, but I doubt that the outcome would be different from our own timeline. In the 2022 special military operation in Ukraine the European Federation would still support Ukraine with roughly the same amount as in our own timeline and the war wouldn't see any changes. As for new members. They may be less enticed to join the Europe Federation as they would be given v up their sovereignty, but on the other hand it would be easier for these countries to join. For example the reason Turkey is not able to join is their undemocratic practices, but here if they were to join THR European Federation could force Turkey to follow the constitution. In the United Nations the European Federation couldn't just have two permanent seats, and thus would lose one. It is either possible that just four remain or that another gets a seat. That one would probably be a member of the G4, or now G3 without Germany. I doubt Japan would get a seat as it was originally designed for members of the allies of World War II and Russia and China would oppose that. As for India Russia would be in favor, but not India, and so I think Brazil would get a seat. In 2024 the European People's Party would win the European parliamentary election something they've been doing since 1999 and the European People's Party upholds its coalition with the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats and Renew Europe. That same year Democrat Joe Biden wins re-election against Republican Vivek Ramaswamy who was picked after Donald Trump was forbidden from running again. In 2024 the West African War starts. It was a short war and ended in the ousting of Niger's, Burkina Faso's, Mali's and Guinea's dictators and the establishment of Izawad. In 2025, two and a half year after the outbreak of the Iranian protests the Ayatollah regime was overthrown and a constitutional monarchy was established with Reza Pahlavi as Shah and Shirin Ebadi as Prime Minister. A second nuclear deal was agreed upon ten years after the first one with the United States and European Federation. In 2025 or maybe even 2026 the Ukrainian war would end in a Pyrrhic victory for Ukraine as they regain their 2014 borders, but are completely devastated and would need to be rebuilt. Ukraine would after the war join NATO and maybe even the European Federation. This disaster was used by Azerbaijan as they invaded Armenia and took over Artsakh, Zanshu and Vats. Azerbaijan wasn't just emboldened by the disaster in Russia 
but by the end of the Islamist regime in Iran. Azerbaijan may later join NATO. By 2026 China would surpass the European Federation economically if we assume that nobody else would join the European Federation. In 2026 Joe Biden dies and Kamala Harris becomes the first female president of the United States. In 2027 Moldova annexes Transnistria and may join the European Federation. That same year Bougainville becomes independent. It was in 2027 when the Ethiopian reservoir was filled up and water went upstream towards Egypt again. In 2028 Kamala Harris lost the election to Chris Christie who was the first Republican to win the popular vote since 2000, or and the first non-incumbent Republican to win the popular vote since 1988. In 2029 the S&D would win the European parliamentary election and the ID and EC are lost hard. They form a coalition with the Greens and Renew. In 2030 the East African Federation would unify becoming the biggest country in Africa and in 2031 China invades Taiwan starting the Second World War. In this timeline the European Federation would be after the United States the second most powerful state on the world with a strong economy, huge population and strong military, and would greatly impact the world. If you liked the episode, leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.